Welcome to the course on how to process and extract pictures from video files. We are going to start with a brief introduction on what is sound. It is important to know what are we measuring. So there are basically two definitions for sound. One is a physical definition where sound is defined as a vibration that propagates as an acoustic wave through a specific medium, which can be a gas, like air, a liquid, or a solid. But if you want to do deep learning or any kind of machine learning application, for instance, to do sound tagging, you need to know that there is another definition for human perception of sound which can be a little different from the physical definition. In human psychology or physiology, you deal with how the sound is represented in the brain. So you will be able to hear frequencies from 20 Hz to 20 kilohertz. And instead of measuring frequency directly, you will be hearing pitch in the sound, which is slightly different. We are going to see about it later in the course. So sound can be defined as an oscillation in air pressure, where you will have molecules of air, and when the molecules are close together, you will have higher pressure, and where they are Further apart, you will have a lower pressure. So you can represent these differences in pressure as a wave. This is a sinusoidal signal, a periodic signal. And you can measure, for instance, in the x axis, um, representation of the space, or also a representation of time in the x axis. And in the y axis, you can measure the pressure differences between each point of space. So let's do a brief recap on waves. Probably you've seen this kind of introduction at college, but it's good to refresh some concepts. For instance, that a wave has associated an amplitude, which is the distance between the equilibrium point, for instance zero, to the value of the measure in a specific point of time. For instance, this will be the amplitude, which is the maximum value that this periodic wave can attain. This distance will be the amplitude. So this is a sinusoidal waveform. We will have different phases of the wave. For instance, the phase at 90 degrees will be this amplitude. And when the signal repeats itself, you will form a period or a, or a cycle. The amount of how many cycles do you have per second is the frequency. So you can have sinusoidal waveforms, but you can also have square waveform rectangular waveform, triangular waveform, and so on, like so-called waveform. Each of those will have a period associated, which is the minimum unit of the signal, so which is can be defined. Afterwards, you can have a signal with a lot of periods, but the basic unit of the signal without repeating itself, will be the period. OK, let's start by importing some libraries to begin our coding.
we are installing the latest version of PestAI. and torch away. This will be JIT. I have it already installed, so I can proceed. Let's import some basic libraries. Matplotlib for do some figures. And some calculations. And now let's start loading some data. This is freely available data. Let's define the data folder. Just in case. And we are getting the data. So we can start playing one example. Let's begin with Let's load an example And in the notebook, we are going to have this player. And what about terms like over the limit? And we can play it. And what about terms like here. over the limit? We can mute this. If and we want. what about terms like over the limit? So the idea is that we are going to compare this library with another one which is a little bit more advanced. It is called Librosa. And the difference is that you have a lot of more of options 
for instance, you can define a sample rate. We can load the example that we just use. At this time, we are not defining a sample rate. And we can obtain, for instance, the value in hertz of the sample rate, which is how many times do you measure a signal per second. So the idea is that if the sample rate is higher, you are going to have a better quality sound in the recorder. The sound file is a time series, basically. So you can display how long is the time series. And you can also display the duration of the file. Which basically is, is the length of the time series divided the sample rate. So we have that the sample rate of this audio file is 16,000 Hertz. That the amount of time points that you have in the time series is this amount and you have this amount for the duration of the audio file. And what about terms like over the limit? Now, we can plot this signal to have an idea of the shape of the audio wave. And for that, we are going to import from Librosa, display, we are going to create a figure and we are defining its size. Check what happened here. This is big size. So we can see it here. We can see the audio file represented as a wave. We can see that it starts in about 500 milliseconds and it lasts for the amount of time that we have here, 3.16 seconds. Okay, now that we have the audio file display, we can start analyzing some special quantities like the pitch of the sound. Okay, now let's define a function to create different tones using different frequencies. So let's define make tone specific frequency. Let's define a length. and a sampling rate. Let's define the time axis.
is going to have a sinusoidal shape. Two times pi times the frequency times t, which is the time. And now let's create two clips, one of 500 hertz and the other of 1000 hertz. Okay, let's hear the first radio clip. Now with the second one. You can hear that it's a higher frequency. The, you can perceive it also as a higher pitch. We can see what happens if we decrease the sample rate. You can see that this sound is of a higher pitch, but if I just decrease it, Dividing by two the sample rate is like having less samples of the sound that you are recording. So you are going to hear it as a 500 Hz audio file. Okay, let's see how Let's see what is the shape of those audio files. So let's plot a figure. Okay, the idea is to be able to see two cycles of the signal. If we are using the 500 hertz file, that's, that means that we have 500 cycles per second. And if we have a 16,000 sample rate, what we are going to have for one cycle is just dividing 16,000 by 500. That will give you 34, 32 samples. So if you want to print two cycles, you define it as the double of 34, 32. So it's 64. And this was missing. Now, as you can see, we have two cycles of this audio file. This is a sinusoidal shape. This will be one cycle and this will be two cycles. Okay. Now, we have been handling until now a, a measure of frequency, but 
what we perceive is different from what a machine does because of the way that the brain and the audition works in humans. So we can use a different kind of measure, which is the MEL scale, that it's based on how humans perceive sounds. So basic idea is that you will have some people and you will ask them to write the tones and afterwards you will fit a logarithm, logarithmic function to try to replicate the sound perception. So for instance, if you have a frequency of 20 Hertz, if you remember, we can perceive from 20 Hertz up to 20,000 Hertz. So a 20 Hertz feature will be a zero of the male equivalent. So, we can have this into account if we want to do a deep learning classification because we want to be able to classify sounds as a human perceives them. So, there is a more useful representation of sound called spectrograms where we are going to be able to see the frequency instead of the amplitude of the signal. Okay, so what is the way that we perceive the amplitude of the audio files? You may, you may be familiar with this concept with is, which is the decibel. The decibel is a way the, to represent how loud is a sound. And it's also based on a logarithmic scale. So the idea is that if you have um, an increase of 10x in the sound, for instance, if a sound is 10 times louder than another sound, you will have an increase on 10 decibels of the sound. So if you have a 20 dB louder sound, it means that it's 10 by 10 or 100 times louder that you are going to perceive. So this is a scale just to have an idea on what are the measures. For instance, if you are hearing some moderate rainfall, you will hear about 40 decibels. But if you get higher and higher, there is a safety limit from which you will be at risk or developing hearing damage. So for instance, a chainsaw or a jackhammer in the street will be too loud and you will need to use some protection for your hearing. So let's plot a spectrogram. We are going to use the Librosa library. We are going to obtain the magnitude and the phase of the signal. Okay, what we can see here is a first approach for a graph 
displaying the spectrogram. So the idea is that you're going to have the duration of the audio file in the x-axis and the frequency, meaning that if you have this part of the graph that it's in a lighter color, that means that you have a, a sound with a specific frequency at that time of the audio file. Let's do some other plots. For instance, instead of using a spectrogram using the frequency, we are going to make a male spectrogram, meaning that we are going to display the frequency as a human perceives it. So, We are going to use the same sample rate. Now you can see that the scale is different. We can have a better resolution of the different frequencies if we are using the ML spectrogram rather than just the frequencies. Now let's make a better plot. We are going to have the time in the x-axis and let's also plot a color bar to have a reference Okay, we can see that this is much better. We can see that we have a very informative plot now about the same sound that we have been listening here. Is this one. Is the Y sound. And what about terms like over the limit? We can see that if we just plot the time versus the amplitude, we don't have a good idea about the frequencies. We can see, for instance, that we have a high frequency sound, but it's you can you cannot define the exact frequency of each part of the audio file with this kind of representation, but if you use a spectrogram, you will have what are the frequencies that you will have at each point in time, but also you will have the loudness of that part of the frequency. For instance, you will have, if you, if you don't have any kind of frequency, for instance, a high frequency in the first part of the audio, you will have a very low 
contribution. But if you have a very high contribution to the loudness of the sound, you will have a, a higher decibel measure for that part regarding that part of the audio file in time and also the frequency for that part of the audio file. So you can also represent this as the energy of the wave, meaning that higher energy means a higher area under the curve of the signal. Technically, it's the area under the square magnitude of the concierge signal. And you will have it as the y axis. You are representing y as the amplitude of the signal and time as the x-axis. So we can extract a lot of parameters to use machine learning and try to do some audio file tagging. For instance, you can obtain the minimum value of the signal you can obtain the maximal value or the mean. That will be the signal minimum, maximum, and mean. But if you want to use another kind of feature to do your classification, for instance, instead of looking at the amplitude of the signal, you will need to do a Fourier transform of the signal. Probably if you had some physics courses in your college years, you will remember the Fourier transform. But basically the idea is that you will extract the contributing frequencies of the signal using the Fourier transform. So the Fourier transform, this composes a function, in this case will be your audio signal, which is a function of time, into its constituent frequencies. So, let's begin by defining some example files. We are beginning by loading the example. Just to... And what about terms like over the limit? Have an idea of what was the sound. Let's define a spectrogram from for that sound with sixteen hundred. of sample rate, sorry, 16,000. This will be a parameter for the Fourier transform. Another parameter for the Fourier transform. the resolution, the minimum frequency, and no maximum frequency.
minimum amplitude maximum decibels and let's display this new spectrogram Let's define a maximum frequency and the label for the time. So what happened here? Now we have the spectrogram with our parameters. We set no maximum frequency. We set a, a specific resolution. And now let's make some tones. The idea will be after creating the tones to be able to see them in the by the Fourier transform. So we have a function to make the tone. Now let's define a function to add three tones.
Okay, now we have an audio file with three frequencies. Let's display. Now we can see the signal and the sound, which is a combination of three different frequencies. The first frequency, the second and the third. If you add a sinusoidal function with those frequencies, you will have this as an output. But now we want to extract those those frequencies from the signal. So we will need to define the Fourier transform. We are going to use the SciPy fast Fourier transform. Defining the frequency. And the plot. We can see that in this plot we have the three frequencies that makes up this signal. So this will be the decomposition into the fundamental frequencies of this signal. Okay, in this case we have a very well defined frequency profile, but what happens if we use an audio file like the one that we used at the beginning with the guy speaking? So let's load the example. We can see that there are a lot of frequencies contributing to the human sound, but 
most of the frequencies are located in the lower spectrum from 0 to 1000 Hertz. So the idea for machine learning will be to extract those kind of features and use it in your models. In the next video, we are going to begin coding a machine learning classification algorithm.